Hi, so I'm sorry about the long hiatus. I, I was sick. I had the flu. So I had like a sore throat and stuffy nose and that. Um, yeah, so I'm going to read. So yeah, I'm going to read um, Fantastic Four number 14. Um, I'm sorry if I like blow my nose or I cough really loud during the video because I'm, I'm still sick. I'm still a bit sick. But anyway. So, the cover, like, has Namor, Namor's, like, ass is, like, in the front of the cover. Like, that's, like, one of, that's one of the weirdest covers, like, you think, like, like, he'd have, like, do you think, like, they had the Fantastic Four on one side facing Namor, but no, it's Namor's ass for some reason. But anyway, at last we meet again, but at this time on my terms. How much action, how much drama do you crave? Be on hand when the Submariner strikes. Undersea Monarch versus America's greatest superheroes. Plus the surprise return of another former villain. Another thing, um, uh, I recorded this twice. I don't know if I said this already. Um, yeah, the first time I didn't pick up my audio because I, I had an un internal audio. Because I did those Star Wars, um, like, or playthrough things, uh, I, I footage, because I, I was, I couldn't read any comics, so I, the first recording screwed up, but anyway, I hope this recording is good. So once again, the Fantastic Four face the threat of Submariner and the Merciless Puppet Master. So script by Stan Lee, Art Jack Kirby, inking Dick Ayers, lettering Art Simic. Having defeated the Red Ghost on the moon last issue, the world's most popular superhero team heads for home and new adventure. Move, Butterfingers. I'll take over the controls now. It's almost time to land this crate. Okay, partner. But the way I designed this bird, she can practically land by herself. I'm grabbing 40 winks. Wait, wake me when, I, when we've landed. We've just received radio landing clearance. Wonder if we'll receive much of an ovation when we land, Reed. As the first Earthman to return from a round trip to the moon, you can bet on it, lady. Oh, I think that thing said thing said that. So as the first Earthman to return from a round trip to the moon, you can bet on it, lady. So all air traffic halted within thousand mile perimeter. Fantastic Four land at will. Here they come. They've made it. They've really made it. And as the mighty moon ship prepares to land, excitement reaches a fever ship pitch all over the earth, and especially in the free world, as New York's gigantic Idlewide airport, all eyes scan the blue sky above, until finally, there's the ship, Charlie, roll em. got her, clear as a bell, look at her gliding in, smooth as silk, hard to believe she's the brainchild of one man, but I guess when that man is Reed Richards, it could be. Just think, this scene is being transmitted by Telestar to every part of the globe. It's them, all right. See the number four in the tail? Emergency vehicle, stand by. Roll that truck over there. Move. Good thing it's a perfect landing. Well, what do you expect? It's my job, ain't it? And then as the great ship finally comes to... Look at that, we're being mobbed. First guy who makes asks me to make a speech gets a flat, fat lip. You can't blame people for being excited, Ben. Oop, what a mob. Maybe if I flame off, I'll lose, I can lose myself in this crowd. Sure, with a million cameras on you, and wearing that bl bright blue getup, you're going to lose yourself. What do you use for a brain squirt? Look, there he is. Mister. It's Mr. Fantastic. Sarge, help. I can't hurt, hold these nutty females back. I die for a lock of his hair. So, Mr. Fantastic Fan Club, a Clayville chapter. Now, girls, take it easy. Let's not u lose our dignity. That voice, those eyes, those shoulders. He's too much. Two rival fan clubs fighting over Mr. Fantastic. What a shot. Flash. We saw him first. He's ours. Meanwhile, at every big event, there is always someone who tries to cash in on the publicity. And my fearless wrestler, the Golden Angel... Challenges the thing to meet him in a fight to the finish. Did you get all that, boys? 
of all the crummy corn balls. So you're the golden angel, huh? Well, I ain't gonna wrestle you. And you know why? Because you're so big and tough that I'm still... That I'm shaking in my itty-bitty boots. That's why. Sue Storm, too, has her problems. But you can't turn down a chance like this. A lifetime Hollywood contract? Don't listen to him. I'm prepared to pay you a fortune to endorse our deodorant on TV. Where'd she go? She must have turned invisible. Some people just have no gratitude. At that moment, high over the airport, a strange warm air funnel suddenly appears, hovering over Sue Reed and the Thing. Only one way to get my little partners away from that mob. I've been waiting for a chance to try this little gimmick. The whirling warm air forms a suction in a vacuum. And then... Ben, Reed, Ben, what's happening? We're being drawn into this warm air funnel by the torch. And just in time, too. I didn't even get a chance to clobber anybody back there in the mob. Hi, group. I, ne I thought you'd never get here. After catching their breath, the colorful foursome head for their skyscraper suite via, via their private rooftop elevator. I don't think... I don't know whether I ought to thank you or paste you one hot head. Why don't you get a job as a food tester in a poison factory? Finally, upon reaching their inner sanctum, Ah, this is the life. Wake me up at Christmas. Next Christmas. Hmm, I think I'd better do a little house cleaning. Just as long as you do it silently. And But a few hours later, after a good rest, things are back to normal again with the Fantastic Four. There, that finishes my scientific report to NASA about our new rocket fuel. Now I'll find Sue and ask her to type it up so that we can dispatch it to Washington via special courier. Hmm, there she is operating my new experimental roving eye TV apparatus. She's got it focused on the bottom of the sea. So there you are, Sue. I've been looking for you. Oh, Reed, you, you startled me. She blanked out in alarm, and I'm, not sh and I'm sure I know why. You're still thinking about the Submariner, aren't you, Sue? No, don't answer. There's no need to. Sometimes I wish we, I could find him again, so we could settle things between us once and for all. And then, after giving Sue the report to type, Strange how nobody is ever really master of his own fate. I've always thought myself of being able to accomplish almost anything. With my scientific talent and my super flexible body, it seemed that nothing could ever defeat me. Nothing could outsmart me. No problem could long remain unsolved when I put my mind to it. No obstacle could stop me if I didn't wish to be stopped. Perhaps I allow myself to get too overconfident. Too convinced of my own ability to accomplish anything, I set my mind to. For now, though the world knows me as the invincible Mr. Fantastic, I am unable to win my most cherished goal. I am unable to con completely conquer the heart of the girl I love. And in the next room, another heart is heavy too. I might as well adjust this roving eye viewer to total recall. The oceans are too vast, too deep. Too endless. The Submariner could be anywhere. Thus, at an electronic signal triggered thousands of miles away, Rover begins to rise from the ocean depths. Beep, 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 beep. And head back to New York. Another marvel created by the brilliant scientific brain of Reed Richards. But to Sue Storm, it's just a means to locate the monarch of the sea. A means which failed. Beep, 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 beep. But in a seedy little sanatorium outside of town, a scene takes place which will have far-reaching consequences. Our fantastic cast of characters. Uh, four fantastic cast of characters. No need for you to stay here any longer. You're cured. I know that. I was cured months ago. I've been staying here to let the world forget me. But you would not understand. After leaving the rest home, the strange little man walks through town. I wander through town, thinking, muttering to himself, and whittling absent-mindedly. The fools thought that fall had killed me months ago, but how wrong they were. Now it is time for me to come out of hiding, to plan a fitting revenge on the accursed Fantastic Four. 
but I shall not risk my own neck. I shall get a scapegoat to do the job for me. But whom shall I use? Perhaps some old enemy from their own past. Perhaps the Mole Man, or one of the alien scrolls. No, the Forsen beat them once, and they might do it again. Doctor Doom might once fought them to a standstill, but it is said he vanished from the earth. Wait, I have it. The ideal tool for my master hands. The mighty Submariner. It is he who shall do the bidding of the Puppet Master. At that moment, many fathoms beneath the sea, which is his kingdom, the almost legendary Submariner, still searching for some traces of his vanished people, finds a startling clue. At last, I found what I had been seeking. A shifting undersea vault is revealed. These traces of artificial shelters. This is definite proof that my people have been here within the last decade. I must follow the trail, no matter how long it takes. I must find my race. I must claim my royal heritage. But suddenly, as though struck a violent blow from an unseen hand, the mighty Prince Namor comes to an abrupt halt as a powerful occult force takes control of his mind and body. Ugh, cannot go on. Like a man in a trance, he returns to his hidden headquarters, looking neither left nor right. Must return, must perform a mission. Cannot disobey. The puppet master commands it. Flinging apart a pair of heavy drapes, the, the submariner faces the strangest form of undersea life known to man. The wondrous mento fish, which can sense human thoughts and transmit them to any point on Earth through mental electro waves. Facing the awesome creature, the only fish of its type in the world, Namor thinks but one thought over and over again. Sue, this is some mariner. Meet me, meet me, meet me. And like an insistent voice whispering in her ear, Sue hears, some mariner, meet me, meet me, meet me. Um, it's him. It's Namor at last. I got to find him. He needs me. But I mustn't let the others see me. They'll make a war party of it if they know where I'm going. And I must go alone. It's my one chance to learn if I really do care for some mariner. Following the silent instructions whispered in her brain, Sue finally finds herself at the deserted pier at New York's Lower East Side. I'll remain invisible until I make certain it isn't a trick or a trap. No, it can't be a trap. It's him. I know him from anywhere. Namor, I've come to... Why don't you speak? Why don't you say something? Wordlessly, the sea monarch suddenly moves aside to reveal a fluttering hypnofish behind him, with its single hypnotic eye focused upon Sue. She is under your spell. Now do as I have instructed. At Namor's command, an amazing creature forms a huge air bubble around the docile figure of Sue Storm, and then into the sea with her. She'll be able to breathe normally until we reach my domain, there to await the further orders of the Puppet Master. And so, having bl blindly followed her heart, the Invisible Girl has unwittingly set the stage for one of the Fantastic Four's most dangerous adventures as a grinning figure gloats over the success of his eventual plan. And now it is time for step two. Back at his hideout, the puppet master dons a lead-lined suit and, as long as his radioactive clay holds out, I am complete master of any living creature whose form I mold into a puppet. Then after the clay has been treated and coated with a thin film of lead paint, my revenge will be much sweeter if I do not manipulate the Fantastic Four. Instead, I shall leave them with their free will, while the Submariner under my control defeats them. And back at their skyscraper headquarters, the Fantastic Four are still unaware of the dire danger which awaits them. Hey, how much longer do I have to hold this blame thing? It feels like I weighs a ten tons. It does, that's the idea. I'm trying to test once and for all exactly what the limits of your strength are. Well, tell that blazing brat to stop playing hide-and-seek around me, or I'll shove this oversized toothpick 
down his throat. Uh, I'm just trying to see what... Hey, look. Look who's there. It's the Sun Mariner out of my way. Scrunch. I'm way ahead of you, pal. He's mine. Hey, what gives? I went right through him. Yeah, well, I won't. Here, fish face. Here's a ten, little ten-ton grin for you. Holy Hannah! Do we get something against a ghost or something? Crash. Easy, Ben. There's more than this than meets the eye. That isn't some meritor at all. It's just a mental projection of him. Remember, that's one of his powers. Through the use of an undersea image transmitter. And I have come to tell you that the invisible girl is my prisoner. Hearing Prince Namor's startling words, the human torch streaks from chamber to chamber until he must be right. She's gone. And now as my image fades away, I fling this challenge to you. I defy all of you to invade my undersea realm and attempt to rescue Sue Storm. For if you do, I shall destroy you all. He's gone, and we're going after him. We'll rip up half the ocean floor if we have to, but we won't return without Sue. Now let's move. Meanwhile, in a small native navy surplus, one man sub, I have done it. I have assembled my little cast of characters. And now the stage is set. The curtain is up. So let the action begin. And though not one of the actors realizes the puppet master is directing behind the scenes, I shall witness the final destruction of my arch enemies at the hands of my powerful pawn. Some mariner. So again, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm really nasally. Again, I'm sick. But uh, and back in New York, we know how dangerous Namor is. So just on the chance that we don't return from this mission, we better leave the key to our secret files with the police commissioner. Are you kidding? What chance does this animated sardine have against us? Reed's right, playmate. We owe it to the police. Well, while you campfire boys do your good deed, I'm going to say goodbye to Alicia. I don't want the worrying about where I am. We'll meet at our private pier in 30 minutes. Minutes later, at a midtown parking lot. Oh, for goodness sakes. Hold on there, fella. This parking lot is only for automobiles. You can't park that thing here. Where have you been, Mac? Didn't you ever see a car with wings before? Well, there's nothing in the rules about flying cars. Just to be safe, I'll have to charge you double rates. Here's the dose, Smiley. Now go uh, split with your partner, Jesse James. Uh, then at Alicia's apartment studio. Oh, Ben, I'm frightened. The Submariner is so powerful, so unpredictable. And you'll be facing him where he's strongest, in his own domain. <coughs> <coughs> yeah, again, I'm sorry. Sorry about that. Well, Reed, Johnny, and yours truly ain't exactly babes in arms. Oh, but Ben, if anything would happen to you, I don't know what I'd do. Y you mean so much to me, and I'd be alone. <sighs> With no one to look after me. I was a meathead to come here. I can't stand to see a girl gal cry. Okay, baby, you got it. I'll take you with us. Whatever happens, we'll be together. And so, just a minute, you. That's my job. I'll back that, contrap that contraption out for you. In a pig's eye, you will. Nobody handles this little good job but me. Besides, you're wasting your time. You ought to be looking for some other suckers you can overcharge. Here, laughing boy, just to make sure I don't scrape any of these fenders. When I jet out of here, I'll move these other heaps safely out of the way. Don't! I'll explain to their owners. Cut it out! Ah, uh, have a heart, will ya? That'll teach the old pirate not to charge double for my fantastic car. I'm almost sorry I didn't leave those jalopies piled up there instead of putting it up back again after he got the message. Oh, Ben, dear, if you could only learn to control your temper. Not a chance, honey. I got a rip to live up to. Can't disappoint my pants in public. And exactly 30 minutes later, Admiral Sawyer, Sawyer was very cooperative, Ben. He lent us this experimental bathos, bathos scaff with no questions asked. 
Welcome aboard, Alicia. We had a hunch Ben would be bringing you. For the love of Pete. I was all set for a knockdown argument. Uh, why I can't take her down with me. Now all the speeches I prepared are wasted. Then after reaching one of the deepest ocean areas. Hey, big brain. How do you know what uh, part of this puddle you're going to find some mariner in? I don't. We'll have to take potluck. But I suspect he inhabits the very deepest regions, such as this area. Be on guard, all of you. Some mariner is probably observing our every move through one of his countless undersea devices. Yeah, well, I'm just shivering in my little pink booties. Let him observe all he wants to. When we find him, we'll mop up the ocean floor with him. Suddenly, as if by some silent command, the entire sea begins to grow hostile to the tiny bathyscaphe. Look out! We're being attacked by some huge shooting quills from some sort of giant undersea porcupine. Those barbs can't hurt us, but this is only the beginning. Hang on. Something's causing caused an underwater tornado. If it keeps us keeps up much longer, this tub will shake itself apart. Open up the escape hatch, Reed. I can help with my flame. Don't let him do it, Reed. Come back, you hothead. You'll drown out there. Torch, wait. Don't worry, Thing. By making my flame white, white hot, I can temporarily turn the water to steam, dispelling the spinning currents while my flame lasts. Flame on! There I did it. The tornado stopped whirling, but it dissipated too much of my flame. I'm cooling off. Can't hold my breath much longer. Water pressure beginning to crush me. Well, at least I saved the others. Now they've got to find Sue. Got to. But suddenly a strong, supple arm reaches out, and skillful, sure fingers find their objective. Got him. Now if I can just pull him into the escape hatch before my lungs burst from lack of oxygen. Dragging the helpless lad towards him, inch by inch, second by second, the duo finally reach the safety of the Bassascaf's interior again. You'll be okay after a little rest. Sure, unless some merit or has any other cute tricks to spring on us. Little does the thing realize how prophetic his words are, for at that very moment, they've escaped my first two traps, but now the battle begins in earnest. That's it, my unsuspecting victims. Closer. Just come up a little closer. Ha! Ha! Little did they suspect what seemed like a rocky ledge was really the open shell of a giant scavenger clam. Snap. And then, if you wonder how you got here, the giant clam which clapped, uh, trapped you gives, gives off chloroform vapors, which puts his victims to sleep. But now here you are awake, and you are my prisoners. But don't bet on it, Namor. Only time will tell whether you've ch captured us, or whether we finally succeeded in tracking you down. Bah, your false bravado does not impress me. And now let me show you my prisoner, the one you foolishly came to rescue. There, I have but to draw the curtain to reveal your precious Sue Storm inside an air-filled globule in my trophy tank, guarded by the mighty, uh, mightiest octopus of the seven seas. Look at it, trying to crush the gold global. If that glass globe ever breaks, easy, Johnny. There's something strange about some mariner. In his own inhuman way, he loves Sue. He never put her in jeopardy like that. Let's get him. I better battle you one by one, as is the custom of my people. Who shall be the first? Me, you flat-headed creep. That's my sister in there. Flame on. Prepare yourself for a surprise, Torch. There is an undersea creature which lives in a cold, icy cave. To keep it alive... It actually devours any kind of heat. And this is it, the living weapon with which I shall defeat your flaming power once and for all. A ravenous, unthinking flame eater. It's working. He is absorbing the heat from your body as a sponge absorbs water. Getting weak. All the flame, all the strength. Draining away from me. Can't, can't stay aloft. Look at yourself, Torch. Behold a fabulous fabled hero of millions. But my flame heater has had enough. 
He can absorb no more. He has done his task well. All that remains is for me to finish the job with my bare hands. Well, what are you waiting for? I never learned how to say uncle. Oh, no, you don't fish face. That brave little kid is worth a dozen double crosses like you. This is supposed to be a hand-to-hand -hand fight. If you can bring in those sea creatures of yours, then the torch can use a little help too. And his brother, he's going to get it. You will find that Prince Namor is not a puny surface man who cringes at the sound of the thing's voice. Holy Hannah, you're as slippery as an eel. Come back here and fight, you weasel. I'll fight you, never fear. But you ugly blundering oaf, we shall fight in my way, on my terms. Here, let me toss you a little present. Oh, it's, it's Ranger Sharp. So my dagger needle coral is not to your liking. Well then, perhaps this bit of deep sea fungus will suit you better. Come down and fight you, crumb. You'll probably be throwing spitballs next. Oh, I neglected to mention one thing. You'll find that piece of fungus more dangerous than you suspected. You see, it spreads out on contact with any living thing, engulfing whatever it touches, as it grows harder and harder. There, you lumbering clod. I have beaten you. I have trapped you in a living prison, a prison which there is no escape. That's it, thing. Struggle helplessly. Writhe and bend, and flex your now useless muscles. In another second, even that inactivity will be impossible for you. Sonny, did anyone ever tell you you got a big mouth? Crack. Good work, partner. We're beginning to shake his confidence. Now I'll finish him while you look after Sue. I'll hear you, big da talking big daddy. You wait there, Alicia, baby, and I'll bring you back some octopus pie. You manage to fight the others to a standstill by resorting to powers other than your own. But now I won't give you the chance to summon other help. It's just you and me, Namor. My power against yours. The others make the most noise, but I always felt that you were the most coldly dangerous of all. But you shall see the Submariner is still your master. You bragged of a living prison for the thing. How do you feel being trapped in a living cell where the bars are composed of my elongated arms? You can't maintain this pressure forever. You'll have to release the tension sooner or later. And when you do, meanwhile, don't worry, Sue Gal. I know you, you can't hear me in there, but I'm coming in to set you free. Just hold on a little longer. First thing I gotta do is get rid of that giant octopus. Well, it ain't a Saturday night, but a little bath would never hurt anybody. Look at the size of that gaping glob. If I saw him in a comic mag, comic mag I wouldn't believe it. Scoot, uh, score one for our side. He turned away from, from trying to shatter that globe. He's coming after me. I'll just grab a hold of these tentacles before he knows what's happening. His brain is so small that I'll swing him out of here before he can think of trying to break my hold. Okay, Cuddles, hang on. You're going for a little ride. Then as the monstrous, unthinking creature goes skimming towards the top of Namor's enormous domed headquarters, the thing rushes to Sue's storm. Hold your breath, Sue. I'll have you out of here in two seconds. Brave kid. Not a whimper out of her. First time I ever saw a female who could keep her mouth shut so long but as the triumphant thing carries sue to safety another pair of eyes are focused on the tense scene the fantastic four are more powerful than i thought this was not the way i planned it even in his own undersea lair the accursed foursome may succeed in defeating the submariner no longer can i let things take their natural course now i myself must take a hand it is time for me to destroy them all. Now that the girl is free, Mr. Fantastic has released Namor, but the Submariner has not really tried to kill them, only to defeat them. I must change that. I must make him destroy the Fantastic Four. Forever. So long as you are my puppet, you are my bidding. You must slay the real Fantastic Four, just as I have toppled their puppet images. Namor, let's stop, stop this useless struggle. Why must we always battle each other? What has made you turn against us, turn against Sue? Stay back. 
The time for words is long past. I must put an end to you now. To all of you, I have no other choice. Although I cannot see, I sense another presence here. I sense a mental power, a sinister control, like the power of my stepfather, the puppet master. The puppet master. That would explain it. But it can't be. He's dead. Or, or is he? This plant is my ultimate weapon. It releases a great gas which no living creature can withstand. And these fumes shall now destroy you all. Release the fumes, I command you. You must obey me. I must obey. I must, I must kill them all. They are my enemies. If it is their lives or mine. And yet Sue is among them. But I have no choice. Yet, why must they perish? Why can I not stay my hand? Stay behind me, all of you. Whatever's coming, I'll take it first. I ain't so easy to kill. And I give you time to erase that slimy wet head. Once and for all. That's it, thing. Keep his attention on you while I take a few preventative measures. No, I can't. I won't. I can't murder the... What? What happened? I didn't mean to activate the fumes. How were they released? What is controlling me? But you're still, still standing. It's impossible. Nothing can survive those lethal fumes. Not even you. Did you think I would be unprepared for such a deadly threat? I paced these flexogen packets on all our faces before you struck. And now, Namor, for the final reckoning. You're too powerful, too unpredictable to be allowed to menace mankind any longer. One side, Sue. We got some mopping up to do. I want him first, just him and me, with no creepy fish helping him. Wait, all of you, stop. You mustn't listen to me. He doesn't know what he's doing. He isn't to blame for what's happened. Alicia is right. Namor is under some sort of spell. Under an evil influence, I know it. Stand aside, they do not frighten the Submariner. But at that fate fateful moment, a giant octopus, which had been hurled to the top of, top of Namor's dome by the rampaging thing, shatters the thick plexiglass shell in an awesome display of almost limitless strength. And then frees once more to ravage the ocean depths. The mighty creature, in its uncontrollable rage, seeks a new victim to attack. Up ahead, something wavering, the tentacle, tentacles reaching towards me. Oh no, no, it's the beast, the giant octopus. It sees me, it's coming towards the sub. Too late to change course, only one chance. I've got to control it. I have only seconds to make a puppet of the deadly brute. He's coming closer, but he won't get me. I'll have under under my control before he can touch the ship. No one can defeat the puppet master, as long as I have my radioactive clay. But in his frantic haste, the puppet master overlooks one little detail, a detail which means the difference between victory or disaster for him. But the sinister sculptor forgot that you cannot control the mind of a creature which is almost mindless. And so, no, stay back, back, I command you. It's no use. He doesn't obey. He's trying to crush the sub. And at the same split second, Submariner suddenly recoils as though his brain has received a violent shock. Oh, my head. The pressure, it's gone. Look, something has happened to Namor. No time for that now. The water is rushing in through the gaping hole above. Hey, the torch fixed it. He welded it together again with his flame. So you finally pulled your own weight around here, eh, sonny boy? Ah, uh, knock it off, thing. You know that if I had a f our f um, my own fan club, you'd be the first one to volunteer for president. What's ha been happening here? How dare you invade the sanctum of Prince Namor uninvited? Explain yourselves. I'll be blankety-blanked. He's either the world's best actor, or else he was really under some kind of spell. Sue... Have you come to me at last, to share my undersea domain? No, Namor. Much as you fascinate me, my loyalties are still with Reed. As for my heart, perhaps one day it will be able to make a final choice, but not yet. Enough of this. A prince does not beg. As for me, I have a mission yet to complete. I still must find my vanished people. 
Sooner or later I shall locate them. I shall find the lost race of some mariners. And then we shall see who this planet rightly belongs. Do you hear me? We shall see. Now return to the surface. You have no further business here. Take the girl, Reed Richards. Take her and hold her if you can. But heed my words. Never shall she forget Prince Namor. I'll go get the bathy scaff where that cornball starts for sight in Hamlet. Goodbye, Namor. I pray that some day you will lose the bitterness from your heart and that you might become our friend. Friend, that is too mild a word for the submariner. Farewell for now. Yeesh. All we need now is a brass band. I wonder if it was really the puppet master who is controlling Namor. Let us hope not, for if he still lives, then none of us are safe. You always seem to be safe, baby, as long as I'm around. Strange, I cannot remember what brought them here, and yet I feel as though a terrible weight has been lifting from me. And so the Fantastic Four leave the undersea realm of Prince Namor the Submariner as they head for one of the, mo the most bizarre adventures of all time. But that's a tale for next issue. So yeah, that's the end of this comic. Um, hope you guys enjoy this video. Uh, if you can like, comment, or subscribe, that'd be appreciated. Um, thank you, and I'll see you guys later.